Hi everyone, this is Dan from Asus, and today we'll be covering some of the basics of building a PC. I'll walk you through the process from start to finish, show you some helpful tips, and help you avoid some common mistakes. Don't be intimidated, building a PC is really easy to do. This is the case we'll build our PC in, the Tough Gaming GT301. Not only is this a great looking case with its RGB lighting and glass side panels, but it's also an easy case to work with. You have lots of room for your components and your cables. Most of the components we'll be using for our build are from the Tough Gaming Alliance. The products were all built to work together seamlessly, and they all share the same rugged aesthetic. We'll start with our motherboard. For this, I've chosen the Tough Gaming B550 Plus Wi-Fi. You can think of the motherboard as the nervous and circuitory system of our PC. It connects all your components and facilitates the transfer of information and power. To protect the motherboard from static while we work, I'll keep it here on the box. I'll connect a few of our components to the Tough B550 Plus motherboard before I put it into the chassis. That way I have much more room to work with when installing some of the more delicate components. The first component is our CPU. I'll be using an AMD Ryzen 5 3600X. This little guy will be the foundation of our PC. You can think of the CPU as the brains of the computer. It does the lion's share of the processes and your CPU's performance will broadly determine how powerful your PC is. Start by lifting the metal rod on the CPU socket. Match up the little triangle on the corner of your CPU with the matching triangle on the corner of your CPU socket. Gently put it into place and secure it with the metal rod. Next we have our RAM. I've chosen a 16 gigabyte set of T-Force Delta Tough DDR4 memory. RAM provides fast and easy to access memory for our CPU. You can think of it as short-term memory for your PC's brain. Let's say you're looking for a book in the library. The librarian tells you it's in aisle seven. You keep that number in your head until you get to the aisle and the book. But a week later, you probably won't recall what aisle you're in. The CPU uses RAM for similar short-term memory functions. For this build, we'll be using just two sets of DDR4 memory sticks, each with eight gigabytes of memory. If you want to take full advantage of your four DIMM slots, be sure to get RAM that is compatible with one another. You can't mix RAM size or frequency, so it's best to buy two of the same set. These are really easy to install. Just plug them in onto the slots next to the CPU. Next, we'll need to install some storage. Here we have an M.2 solid state drive. This little stick provides long-term memory for our computer. This is where your games and other files will be stored. First, we'll remove the heat shield. Then we'll insert our M.2 drive at a 45 degree angle. We'll then secure the other side of the drive with a screw and then reattach the heat shield. The heat shield prevents speed throttling due to heat. So you wanna make sure there's plenty of contact between it and the M.2 drive below. All right. Now that my M.2 SSD is in place, it's time to attach our CPU fan. The CPU can get pretty hot as it's working, so we need to draw that heat away with a heat sink and a fan. To better facilitate that transfer of heat energy away from the CPU, we'll need a thin layer of thermal paste. I'll be using the stock AMD fan. Your CPU fan should come out of the box with a pre-applied layer of thermal paste, but since I'm reusing this from a previous build, I'll need to apply a new layer myself. To apply the thermal paste, I'll put a few rice-sized globs on the CPU and spread them thinly and evenly across the entire surface. With that nicely applied, I'll secure our cooler to the CPU. We'll line the heatsink up with the CPU and gently place it on top. The CPU cooler is held in place by a plate on the rear of the motherboard. Because the screws on this particular cooler are spring-loaded, you'll need to apply a little bit of pressure in order for the screws to make contact with the plate. After the cooler is secured, I'll plug the power cable into the motherboard's CPU fan header near the top of the board. All right, now that our CPU, our M.2 SSD, our RAM, and our CPU cooler are installed on the motherboard, it's time to put the whole thing inside our case.
All right, before we install the motherboard, I'm gonna pump the brakes really quick. First, we need to put in our IO panel. This is something that's really easy to forget and something you probably won't discover until you're just about finished building. That means you'll have to go back and undo a lot of your hard work. So let's put this in before we forget. With the I.O. firmly in place, we can set down the motherboard and secure it in. Our next step is the graphics card, or the GPU. This component performs the visual and 3D processing you need for gaming. While the CPU is a general purpose processor, the GPU is built to process visuals faster and connect to your display devices seamlessly. We've chosen the Tough Gaming GeForce RTX 2060 Overclock Edition for our build. Installing your GPU is very much like installing RAM, but due to its size, we'll need a bit more support. Remove these brackets on the rear first. This is where most of the weight will be supported. Next, we'll place the card into the PCIe Express slot here. When you hear a click, you know it's in. Lastly, we'll screw the bracket screws back in to hold it in tight. The GT301 case has a dedicated spot for a 2.5 inch solid state drive, so I'll install one there. This is just a different kind of storage than our M.2 drive that we installed earlier. Instead of plugging directly into the motherboard, this will be connected via a cable. It will also require a dedicated power cable. It's about time we put in our power supply. I've chosen the ROG Strix 750 watt gold PSU. This will act as the mouth and stomach of our computer. It takes in power and converts it into a form that can be utilized by your various components. With this particular chassis, we want to make sure that all our necessary power cables are plugged into the PSU before we install it. It will be pretty difficult to plug them in after the PSU is in place. With those cables plugged in, we slide the PSU into the bottom space and screw it in. With that installed, we can start wiring everything together. You want to be really neat with your wiring. You want a cool looking PC, not a whole jungle of cables. But more importantly, a neat PC will be a lot easier to cool. Your fans will be able to keep the air circulated better if there's more open space. I can show you how I'm wiring this particular PC, but it'll be different for you based on your components and your case. Just remember to keep things neat and use plenty of zip ties to bundle cables together. All right, so things are looking pretty good. Our components are all plugged in. Our cables are neatly organized. I've done some little interior decoration of the chassis. The moment of truth is upon us. Let's see if it turns on. One click. There we go. Listen to her purr, it's working. Looks like we're all set to start loading up games. So as you can see, 
Building a PC is easy to do and very rewarding. If you're new to PC DIY, I recommend sticking with the Tough Gaming Alliance components. You get a unified look and an easy building experience. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content from ASUS and happy PC DIY build day.